Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about gearing in World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic. One of the things that keeps coming up over and over and over again in my videos, streams, and even Discord is people asking me about gearing priorities. Not only which items should they prioritize first on their respective classes, but also the question of who, which class should get the item first. Do you give it to a mage, a hunter, a warlock? Do you give it to a paladin or a shaman? And in this video, what I want to talk about is who should get what tier tokens first? What's gonna be the biggest benefit, not just for individual players, but also for your rate team, for your guild? Now I'm coming at this from the perspective of someone who's been in the position of deciding who gets what piece of loot and who doesn't. I've been a guild leader, I've been a raid leader. And specifically, I was a, both a guild leader and a raid leader in the context where I was leading a guild through tier five progression and tier six on the server that I was playing on was coming soon. So I had to decide who are the people that were going to benefit the guild the most, which classes were gonna benefit the guild the most to give them gear to. And it was a decision that I had to make, or we as a loot council, we had to make that and, and we had to make it from the perspective of how it was also going to benefit us, not just in terms of clearing tier five, but also how it was gonna benefit us in tier six. Now, of course, with TBC Classic, guilds will have the luxury of plenty of time between tier five and tier six. And with two tier tokens, pretty much any decent raiding guild will be able to fully equip every single one of their raiders. So the discussion in TBC Classic is more about not even progression in tier five, because I imagine for a lot of guilds that won't really to be too much of an issue, but rather how can raids be made as smooth as possible? Who do you equip to ensure that happens? Now, there are some fairly easy answers to give here on this topic and some that are not so easy. I'll start with the easiest discussion, the vanquished hero token, which can be used by mages, hunters, and warlocks. Now here, it's pretty simple. Mages, arcane mages specifically, should get the priority followed by hunters, followed by warlocks. Why this particular priority? Well, mages are at the top for the following reasons. One, arcane mages will make use of both the two set and the four set. The two set is actually the biggest upgrade, but so is the four set a pretty substantial upgrade for an arcane mage. It's with the two set and the four set and the Morgrim Tidewalker Trinket that Arcane Mages become the top tier DPS in all of tier five on single target. And they're actually really good on AOE as well, especially if things die very quickly. Arcane Mages can beat Warlocks in terms of AOE damage if things die quickly because Warlocks will just not have enough time to do enough seeds to win that. But that depends on kill speed. But on single target, a properly supported Arcane Mage will top the meters. What do I mean properly supported? I mean Shadow Priest, I mean Manatide, I mean Innervates. And Arcane Mages do benefit from you giving those items very quickly. Hell, if you get lucky, let's say tier five comes out, you're clearing it all in a week, you get uh, you get enough tier tokens to get four set, and you're lucky enough to get the more Grim Tidewalker token, you should give all of that to a single mage and that mage will go up substantially on the damage meter. It's not a small difference. It's an enormous DPS uh, difference between where mages are, where they start at the beginning of tier five with tier four best in slot and where they end up at the end of tier five with tier five best in slot. And the set bonus is a really big part of that. Following mages, you have hunters. Now, one of the things to say about hunters is that yes, they do want the four set, but a big but, uh, and why they're lower than mages, although the four set will increase their damage, they will not use it until they actually have every single piece. Why is that? Because having four set beast lord is better than individual pieces of tier five until they get the tier five four set. Once they do that, that's when they replace their beast lord pieces. But hunters should absolutely be a priority. And one thing, by the way, to say about mages and hunters is you don't just give random pieces to random people. You don't just say, oh, you get the gloves, then another person gets the belt, uh, the, the pants, another person the helmet, the chest. No, 
you give one mage the entire set, then you give one hunter the entire set or four set, then another hunter, then another hunter. Or if you're using multiple mages, you give those mages the entirety of the four set or at the very least the two set. And that's how you do it. You don't spread the loot around. You give it to one person until they have the four set, then you move on to the next. And at the lowest end of this list, for the Vanquished uh, Hero token, you have Warlocks. Warlocks can benefit from individual tier 5 pieces, but the set bonus doesn't really matter too much for them. And not all the pieces are important, and I'm fairly certain that Warlocks would benefit from keeping the 2 set of tier 4 at the very least. So they absolutely should not be a priority for this particular token. And this is the easiest to sort by far. Let's be clear on this. This is fairly simple. Mages followed by hunters followed by warlocks. After that, you have the vanquished champion token, the paladin, shaman, rogue token. Who do you give it to? Well, in my mind, here's the priority list. Protection paladins at the top for the gloves and the pants. Why the gloves and the pants? Well, the reason is that those are the two biggest upgrades for protection paladins. Tier 4 pieces are not great and protection paladins lack fret options in those particular slots without losing a great deal of survivability. The gloves and the pants in particular, yeah, they have less survivability than pure survival pieces, but they're pretty decent enough, they have good armor, and crucially, they have high spell power, especially the pants. So giving those two pieces to a prop paladin will certainly increase their survivability. You can also add potentially shoulders here, like people say, oh, you get more towards the crush cap with the tier 4 shoulders. Yes, but in terms of avoidance, the parry, the extra armor of tier 5 make them better. But I'd say the priority should be on the gloves and the pants. The shoulders, not so much. The helm and the chest don't really matter. It's just gloves and pants for prop paladins. Other pieces you don't necessarily need to give them as a priority. Then you follow that up with resto shamans and then holy paladins. Why healers? Well, first off, the healing requirements of tier 5 are going to be significantly higher than in tier 4 to begin with. And equipping your healers with tier 5 pieces will increase their output, at least when we're talking about resto shamans and holy paladins. It's different for druids and priests. But anyway, they don't really care too much about the set bonus, but the helm, the shoulders, and the chest all of these are really good pieces. You could actually argue that paladins could be considered the equivalent here to shamans, but I'd say shamans probably need the gear more uh, than paladins. Shamans are very gear dependent as a healer. I mean, so are paladins, don't get me wrong on that, but shamans are more important to a raid uh, than the one holy paladin. Don't, don't ignore the holy paladin. Tank healing is a big deal in tier five. Morgrim, uh, Tidewalker is a perfect example of that and not just him. But yeah, healers, resto shamans, and paladins, holy paladins should get priority after the prop paladin. And they want different pieces, so these are the three that you want to give a priority on the pieces in general. Then we follow that up by with rogues, and then follow, it, follow the rogues with enhanced shamans. Now you might ask, well, wait, are you putting uh, DPS or lower priority than healers? Yes, melee DPS or lower than healers specifically melee. If there was a ranged DPSer that would benefit from the set bonus, they'd probably be higher, but we're talking about melee. Rogues are not horrible. Sure, I meme a lot and I joke a lot about rogues being absolute shit. To a large degree, that's true. But here's the thing. Rogues and melee in general are fucking shit in tier 5. Why is that? It's not because they don't have the output. It's because a lot of fights are designed to screw melee over. Alar. Kelfas in large portions of the, of the fight and a lot of uh, from most of the fight, Salarian to to a certain uh, degree, Lurker to a degree, Hydras to a degree, Leo to a degree, FLK, and on and, and I can go on. And that's just the bosses. Let's not even uh, consider the trash. There's so many tra trash packs in tier five that are not melee friendly. So although melee, although rogues and shamans can benefit from having uh, either two set or four set, dependent on what we're talking about, they absolutely should not be a priority. What they will benefit your raid in terms of their personal DPS is not worth giving those pieces over healers or over your prop paladin. That's where I stand on this. 
Now, when it comes to rogues, rogues will benefit from both the two set and the four set. That's why they're higher than enhanced shamans. They do benefit from it, their damage will increase. As for enhanced shamans, this is a bit of a discussion when it comes to enhanced shamans. I talked with a really good enhancement shaman from Salah Bakers, my former guild, uh, before I, the one I played in before I quit TBC Classic. And he said that he would use Forset, though he was more focused on the survival element of the Forset as opposed to the DPS increase. No, don't, don't get me wrong. Forset is a DPS increase because of the flurry of benefit, the haste benefit that you get from the Forset. But here's the catch. You would use that Forset, but the ideal conditions in which you'd use that Forset is if you got expertise pieces. So the big item here the big item that's going to really um, determine whether or not a shaman uses a forset, as far as I see it, is going to be the Vash belt. If you have it, you may go for forset, because with that belt, with maybe the Lar gloves, or the Hydra shoulders, and the expertise ring from Lower City Exalted, you can get a good amount of expertise. But if you don't have that belt, you are lacking in expertise, so you may not be using the forset. And I think there is a genuine argument, despite all the best lists on Icy Veins and Wowhead and what a lot of people have said, I think there is a genuine argument that stacking expertise is worth it more than the force set bonus for enhanced shamans. For rogues, things are different, just because they play differently, just because how rogues uh, value expertise. But for enhanced shamans, expertise is pretty important. Um, a lot of their damage is from auto attacks. So flurry is great, but so is expertise. Realistically, if you're in Hand Shaman, you would probably want to get the Forset, but only really after you get the Vash Belt in an ideal world. Whether or not you'd use the Forset when you don't have the Vash Belt, that's a discussion I think is worth having. But either way, because they're melee, and because it's questionable whether or not they'd actually benefit from their Forset before that Vash Belt, that's why Hand Shamans are as low as they are. And finally, at the lowest point, Elemental Shamans and Retribution Paladins. There might be some pieces that they use, but the set bonuses are not important for either of them. And for Retribution Paladins in particular, they may only want one or two pieces of tier 5, and even then one of those pieces might just be a stopgap. If you're a Red Paladin, the only item that you really care about is the helmet, and even then there are some other alternatives that are really good. So just bear in mind, Elemental Shamans, Retribution Paladins, lowest priority. For Elemental Shamans, it's because the two set of tier 4 is very important. And for and there's other pieces that are quite a bit better for other slots. Like you might like if you're an elemental shaman, you'd use the tier 4 helm and the shoulders. And for gloves, pants, and chest, there are some other really, really good pieces that you may want to use. And that's where I stand on that issue. I certainly think it makes a lot of sense to gear up your tank, and it makes sense in this context to gear up your healers versus your melee DPSers, or your elemental shaman who doesn't really care well, except using it for stats. And finally, the Vanquish Defender token, the Warrior Priest Druid token. This one can both be very easy and complicated to a degree, and in fact, this is the one that I'm kind of iffy about. Various The various classes and specs benefit in different ways and from different pieces on this list. The only one I'm absolutely certain about is the DPS Warrior. Yes, they go at the bottom because they only need the helmet. They don't really care about the set bonus. Though there is a gear list with a lot of the tier 5 gear. But honestly, if you're playing a DPS Warrior, you don't really care too much about the, the tier pieces. There is a gear, gear set built around having Force it, but... That versus having expertise item, I'd go with expertise pretty much all the time. Or if you don't care too much about expertise, there's also other really good items. So that's the one thing I'm absolutely certain about. The other thing that I'm absolutely certain about is that if you are using a protection warrior, and make no mistake, despite my video on the subject of how top guilds are no longer using pro warriors, the vast majority of guilds will probably have a protection warrior in tier 5. And Force at Tier 5 is the best in slot set bonus for Warriors flat out in the entire game. It's a significant fret benefit for them. Tier 5 in general is a significant benefit for Protection Warriors, not just in terms of their fret, but also their survivability. So you should absolutely give them Force at above everyone else. What's the lowest priority item on this list? Honestly, 
I'd say the helm probably, but even then, not necessarily. But it depends on whether a production warrior has the engineering helmet or not, whether or not the engineering helmet is even going to be in. We have it on the PTR, we don't know for certain if it's going to be in. But either way, regardless of all that, the highest priority should be the protection warrior. So the question mark on this list is with the priests and with the druids. As far as I see it, uh, Shadow Priest should be the second highest priority on this list. There's a couple of reasons, some of, some of which relate to where the druids stand in terms of all of this, but the one thing with Shadow Priests is they're, they're going to use their two set and they're going to use their four set. Their four set is going to help them do more damage. I mean, all of the pieces obviously are going to help them do more damage, but this four set itself is going to increase their damage, which means more mana, which means a bigger benefit to the raid, more mana for your healers, more mana for your arcane mage. It's great. Pre Shadow Priests want both the two set and the four set eventually. They benefit from both. So yeah, I feel they should have a priority. Then, after that, you have the question of Feral Druids or Holy Priests. Here's where I stand on this issue and why I put them on the same kind of ranking. Feral Druids would benefit quite a bit from having the entirety of Tier 5. All of the pieces, without exception. Forget even Force it, just having all of the pieces. But, they wouldn't use them until they got more than enough stats from tier 5 to make up for the loss of their uh, four set from tier 4 if they're tanking I'm seriously not considering a DPS uh, DPS druids on this as far as I'm concerned DPS druids are probably lower priority or some of the lower priority here you gear them up but you don't gear them up first either way when it comes to feral druid tanks you would want to give them four set but they would only use it once they actually had it, similarly to Hunters, whereas Priests would use each individual piece the moment they got it. Same with Protection Warriors. Then there's a the question of Holy Priests. Holy Priests want the two set, the helm with the, the gloves or the pants, or gloves and pants would work as well, maybe even having all of those pieces. But really the important thing for Holy Priests is that two set, that's the benefit for them. And they would use actually each individual item the moment they got that. So what's more important? And that this is a genuine discussion that should happen in guilds. What's more important? Giving Feral Druids the four set, which they would use once they got it, but they wouldn't use it until they had all those pieces. Or giving your Holy Priest or Holy Priests two set that they would use right off the bat. That's a discussion. That's going to be the judgment of every guild dependent on what's more important for them, their Feral Druid tanking capabilities or their Holy Priest healing capabilities. Either one works. One thing to say, by the way, about Holy Priest, there's gear lists which are saying, oh, you should get all of the tier 5 items. No, Primal Mooncloth is extremely powerful, even with all of the tier 5 gear, you still want to use it. The real benefit of a full tier 5 set is survival, not healing not mana it's survivability because of the stamina it has if you're actually interested in raw healing output two set with primal mooncloth would work very well anyway after ferals and holy priests balanced druids yes four set balanced druids it's going to be quite beneficial like balanced druids aren't just in a raid for the sake of debuffing they can actually do pretty solid damage if you gear them up correctly and that's where the four set of tier five can help. And then you have resto druids. They can use the two set. They can use the four set. How much they'd want to, I think it depends on the situation, how big of a deal of mana is going to be, whether or not they would want to use primal mooncloth. I think resto druids would be fine without a single piece of tier five, to be honest. Balance druid, balance druids, ferals, holy priest, shadow priest, they'd get a pretty substantial benefit each, every single one of them. Restored Druids, they get the benefit, but how much of an impact that's going to have, that's debatable. That's where I stand on this issue. This is what I personally do. And everyone has to make their own judgment. But all I can do is give people advice, whether or not they want to listen or whether or not they have to conserve factors that apply to their own guilds. That depends on them. Questine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.